meet Chuck. That's Chuck right there. Chuck's been here an awful long time. Much longer than the people that are here now. Chuck's been here for probably 120 years at a minimum. And the house has been here for quite some time as well. Herein lies the problem. The house was so old, it needed to be redone. And uh, the architect wanted to make the house symmetrical to the front. And uh, in doing so, that would be the end of Chuck. So uh, instead of doing that, they lopped off the corners. They lopped off the corners, didn't they? They lopped off the corners. <laughs> These are the kind of dogs you want right here. Kind that'll let you know if there's any weird hairy people in your backyard prowling around making videos. Anyway, they lopped off the corners of the house uh, here and over here. Uh, so they could have a symmetrical rear of their property. And uh, they kept the classic Victorian lines of the architecture and the house is really beautiful. Uh, and uh, now in doing so, by lopping those corners off, they allowed Chuck to stay. However, Chuck still encroached a little too far on the foundation and they hired me to come out and ask them if it was possible to cut back this root system in order to accommodate it, uh, accommodate the construction of the house. And I'm like, heck yeah, you can cut. This is a lesson to all. Uh, you, you know, these, these people paid me quite a bit of money to come out and tell them this. Now you, get, you have this knowledge for free. So in case you have a Victorian house and you have a giant chuck in your life and you're wondering if you can uh, do this very same thing here, now you don't have to pay me to do it. Uh, so what you can do with these palms, these are surface roots. There was soil at about a level here, um, but uh, these palms over the years, they will exfoliate their bark off of the tree. And just from the humidity of the air, they will actually create these surface roots. It's sort of unknown why, but a lot of people think it is to capture oxygen. Um, that's, that's one of the, uh, the theories, but they do it. They create surface roots. It gets a little ugly. It's kind of an interesting texture. You know, it's a little bit different then uh, I think it's actually kind of pretty in its own way, uh, but, um, but it is very much different than the bark of the tree, which is really pretty. Now, to change subjects just briefly, the bark of the tree is an interesting thing. This pattern here is from natural break off of the bark. You see, you have the fronds up there, they connect to the outer bark. The bark, uh, you cut off the fronds and then you leave the bark behind. That's what creates the pineapple. As that bark flakes off naturally, it leaves natural abscission points, like just natural breaks. Then you get this really beautiful texture on the tree. Now, the trees that uh, Las Vegas puts in, they take a chainsaw and they trim all of this exceptionally smooth so the machine that looks like it's a machined look like a perfect cylinder. Now, I particularly like this bark in its natural broken off form because I believe it creates a beautiful textural pattern on the tree. Now that's especially important when you're putting it next to um, period architecture, because especially period architecture that existed before chainsaws because the only way you can get the machined smooth trunk look is from a chainsaw and chainsaws didn't exist when this home was first built. So now this pattern of this natural abscission is uh, complementary to the architecture here. I actually had a hotel, a period hotel, uh, the Coronado Hotel in San Diego ordered trees for me, but they had to be trees that had natural bark because they wanted to make it look at, uh, complementary to the period of the hotel, which was the late 1800s when there were no chainsaws. Now back to the, the uh, issue at hand here. This, this, this bark, this whole root mass, it can grow out and kind of uh, become a little bit uh, bulky, but it can also be cut back to no detriment to the tree. And we very carefully cut this off with some very sharp shovels and we created just wide enough of a space for a passage for a human. Littler humans would fit better than I, but even I fit through here, no problem. 
And here is the beautiful uh, bark and tree as you encounter it uh, when you walk up to the tree. Sorry about the exposure there. And uh, here, is, here is Chuck from inside this. This is an access tunnel that leads out to the street right here to get into the backyard without having to go through the house. And so, so you know, you can always trim back these roots. You can even trim off the root ball substrate. And you can see here, it actually created a natural fence um, hole to accommodate the bulk of the tree. We basically cut off all that we needed to and none that we didn't. And uh, there you go. Now, my customer wanted me to check up on this tree. It's doing absolutely fabulously. There's a few dead fronds, which caused a little bit of alarm for them, but those are the oldest fronds, lowest in the rung, and that is natural browning that's happening. There's no disease, there's no problem. And there actually was a hole in the trunk some squirrels were getting into and causing a cavity, and we put a screen over that so they can't get in there, which is the thing to do. Um, I suggested that possibly we could put a ring of sheet metal around the tree and we would screw the screws into the bark, the excess bark of the tree, not the core of the tree. The core of the tree conducts all of the water and happy nutrients that keeps the tree alive. This is just excess skin that's dead material. You could screw into this, please don't screw into that. It's not good for the tree, the core of the tree. But uh, the customer decided, well, we love seeing the squirrels run up and down and the cats like to watch them. So we're not gonna do that. And so um, as long as you don't have any trees in the neighborhood that might have diseases, uh, it's probably fine to not, to allow the squirrels to run up the tree. But if you do have trees that are nearby you that are diseased, you probably want to put uh, about three foot of sheet metal all around the tree because the squirrels cannot get traction. Therefore, they cannot climb the tree. Now, uh, you see we have some really beautiful spider plants growing on the tree epiphytically. Epiphytically means it's just clinging to the tree and not tapping into the tree for its own uh, resources just to keep it alive. That would be a parasite, not an epiphyte. And so what I'm suggesting here is a whole bunch of beautiful bromeliads, Talansias and even orchids that could be affixed to this bark. And therefore you have this beautiful vertical tropical garden and it's a total asset. And uh, anyway, so if you need to cut back the roots of a tree, make sure that all of your pruning equipment is ex extremely sterile and extremely sharp and um, you can do it. And that's pretty much the end of my story today. And I'll give you one last glimpse of Chuck. I didn't name him, but but uh, that's his name, Chuck. Chuck's a happy tree. <laughs>